Hi guys, uh, this is Dr. G here and in this particular video we will talk about resonance structures. So, especially in organic chemistry we see certain molecules that have structures that cannot be shown with a single representation. Most of the times these molecules or these uh, chemical compounds have a hybrid structure that is basically a, an average of multiple Lewis structures. So these multiple Lewis structures that resembles the overall structure differ uh, with each other primarily through the position of their pi or non-bonding electrons. So basically, uh, these uh, multiple Lewis structures that represent the same molecule, we call them resonance structures. And these resonance structures contain uh, delocalized pi or non-bonding electrons. So the resonance structures are basically uh, structures of the same of a single chemical compound that differ by pi or non-bonding electrons. And these pi or non-bonding electrons are usually delocalized in order to obtain different chemical structures or different resonance forms. So in here I have a I have a small example for you. So in here I have an acetate ion. So in this acetate ion, of course, you have a carbonyl group which has uh, which has pi electrons, and next to those pi electrons, you also have an oxygen atom with a negative charge. So you basically have uh, pi electrons and non-bonding electrons next to each other. So basically, what what you could do in here is that you could try to delocalize the negative charge uh, onto the other carbon. So let's see how, how you could do this, okay? So let's say you have a negative charge. So you, you start delocalization from the electron-rich area, right? So keep that in mind. Whenever you are trying to obtain a different Lewis structure or let's call it a resonance structure, whenever you are trying to draw a different resonance form, you always start with the more electron rich area. So, of course, negative charges are the richest and then you can say uh, lone pairs and then pi electrons. So in here, we will start with the negative charge. OK, and then uh, we can put this two electrons on the negative charge between carbon and oxygen. But in order to occupy this new bond, you have to break the carbon oxygen, one of the carbon oxygen bonds or the pi bond between carbon and oxygen. So if that happens, what you get is something like this. Okay, CH3 group remain as is. Now the carbon oxygen double bond is broken. You only have a single bond, a sigma bond between carbon and oxygen. And of course, the pi bond is now a non-bonding electron pair which is a negative charge right and also between the other oxygen and carbon you have a double bond you have a double bond okay so basically if you take a look at these two structures they can uh, flip between each other they can basically flip between each other and uh, they could give you two different uh, resonance forms and the only difference between these two resonance forms let's call it a and b so the only difference between a and b is the location of the pi and non-bonding electrons right pi and non-bonding electrons all the sigma bonds are intact we have not uh, uh, broken any sigma bonds so by delocalizing the pi or non-bonding electrons you at you obtain a different Lewis structure from the previous one and these two Lewis structures are actually called resonance structures. These two Lewis structures are basically called resonance structures of this particular acetate ion. Alright, so, so let's uh, discuss why uh, we need these resonance structures. Of course, in this particular example, you have an acetate ion which has a negative charge on oxygen right so when you have a negative charge it is an instability right so you prefer to have a neutral molecule so whenever your molecule is charged that molecule tend to be more unstable right so it is like having a huge loan in your bank i mean in your account right so when, whenever you take a loan you are going to be unstable 
right? Because banks are going to charge interest on your loan and then you are financially going to be unstable. So basically having a negative charge on acetate is also an unstability. So what does the uh, acetate ion do? It tries to delocalize the negative charge around. It's like, you know, you are, you are trying to borrow money from your friends to pay off the loan so that, you know, temporarily you are releasing the burden of that loan, right? So that is exactly what the molecule is doing. So it is trying to delocalize this negative charge onto other atoms so that temporary, temporarily it can release itself. Right, so that is exactly what happens here. So you, by delocalizing the pi and non-bonding electrons, the molecule is trying to achieve more stability. So here's the thing. In organic chemistry, we are always going to talk about stability, okay? So when it comes to st stability, one of the most important things that we will look for are resonance forms. So if a molecule can show different resonance structures, that means the molecule is going to be more stable okay that is something to remember okay so stability is an important thing to remember when it comes to resonance forms stability all right so next there is another term that goes with resonance structures we call it resonance hybrid okay so whenever you have multiple resonance structures for a chemical compound okay those resonance structures actually are hypothetical the actual structure is a hybrid or you can say it's an average of all of those other resonance structures so uh, the average structure of two or more resonance structures are called the resonance hybrid okay the resonance hybrid is actually the average structure of two or more resonance structures. And of course, the resonance hybrid is going to be the most stable uh, structure of the molecule. And of course, uh, that is the closest structure to the actual uh, chemical structure of a chemical compound. Okay, so in here I have a resonance hybrid for benzene. Okay, so benzene the chemical formula is uh, C6H6. Okay, so you can draw the structure for benzene as a hybrid form like this the six carbons also have six hydrogens and then uh, you also have a ring in the middle so let me explain this resonance hybrid okay so for benzene when it comes to benzene the chemical formula is c6h6 so if you calculate the degree of unsaturation it is four okay so you obtain the degree of unsaturation for benzene by having three double bonds and a ring okay three double bonds and a ring so this is how benzene looks like of course each carbon has a hydrogen you don't have to show them but let me show them in skeletal formulas you don't have to show hydrogens that are attached to carbons but let's do it for now so in here as you can see each carbon has a hydrogen and also that carbon is also connected to a double bond so each carbon also has a sp to hybridization those are extra details okay but the other important thing is that when you draw a structure for benzene like this you can also draw a resonance structure how you can basically uh, move these three pi bonds to the next bond okay to the next carbon okay if you do that if you do that you're going to get something like this you're going to move all three double bonds to the next two carbons okay and it looks identical to the previous structure but you obtain it by moving or delocalizing the three pi bonds on benzene so in one structure the double bonds are between let's say uh, uh, these two carbons okay but in the next one it is moving to the other two carbons so still all carbons have a double bond okay each carbon has a double bond but in in these two structures as you can see the location of the double bond is different so you can say that uh, both these structures represent represent uh, benzene represent benzene or this particular molecule c6h6 so rather than writing both these structures you can average these structures how do you average it 
So when you take a look at it, you will see that one time uh, certain carbons have a single bond and next time they have a double bond. So when they are switching between the two, two, uh, two, two structures or two resonance forms, it is like, you know, you're switching between one bond to a two bond. So ever, on average, you basically have a one and a half bond, okay, one and a half bond. Uh, between each carbon right so one and a half bond why because one time it is a single bond the next time it is going to be a double bond so because of that rather than drawing these two structures you can draw an average structure where you have one and a half bonds so this dash bond is like a like a half a bond okay so this is how you draw a resonance hybrid okay so let, let's take the same example that we had before okay uh, we had an acetate ion here is here is the acetate ion okay so it has a resonance structure like this i showed you how to draw it excuse me all right so these are the two resonance structures so rather than drawing these two resonance structures you can draw a hybrid structure like this ch3 c o o and uh, in one occasion, these bonds are double bonds. In the next occasion, they are single bonds, right? Rather than drawing them like this, you can draw it like this, okay? So, one and a half bond, okay? So, dotted line basically denotes the half a bond, okay? So, this is one way to represent. Uh, actually, you can say it is a better way to represent the overall structure, okay? So, this is this right here. This... Uh, this right here is your resonance hybrid, okay? It basically averages all the uh, resonance structures you have. By the way, I also have to mention this important thing, okay? Whenever you are drawing resonance structures, you separate resonance structures using a double-headed arrow, okay? Keep that in mind. You always separate your resonance structures using a double-headed arrow, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, so let's summarize the everything that we learned uh, in in the next in in the previous uh, i mean in the last few minutes okay so let's uh, summarize these in a formal manner uh, and let's list them as rules okay let's talk about rules of resonance forms okay so the first uh, rule that we have learned is that uh, individual resonance forms or the Lewis structures, okay, they are imaginary, okay, the real structure is more close to the hybrid resonance, okay, resonance hybrid. And uh, resonance forms only differ in the placement of the pi or non-bonding electrons, right? So they only differ uh, from the pi or non-bonding electrons. So you might want to pause the video and see if you could draw resonance structures for this molecule. Okay, so in here, we will start moving electrons using a uh, starting with the negative charge okay then we can obtain another resonance structure where you have a double bond between the c carbon the two carbons and oxygen gets the negative charge and ch3 remains intact okay so these are the two resonance structures for this particular molecule okay so resonance forms only differ in the placement of their pi or non-bonding electrons and of course, resonance uh, structures obey normal rules of valency. Okay, always worry about the electron octet. Okay, whenever you have an electron octet, those atoms are more stable than atoms that do not have an electron octet. All right, so, and also whenever you have uh, two resonance structures that are non-equivalent, okay, that are non-equivalent, then uh, the actual structure is actually more close to the more stable resonance structure. Okay, so... When you, are, when you have two non-equivalent resonance structures, always worry about the uh, stability of each resonance structure. And then the more stable resonance structure uh, will basically resemble uh, the resonance hybrid more. Okay, The contribution to the resonance hybrid uh, from the more stable uh, structure will be higher. Okay, So here's an example. Okay, In here, I have... Uh, an aniline, uh, uh, I mean, it used to be an aniline, but uh, I mean, because of the substitution of E, okay, 
uh, or you can say addition of fee uh, it has made a positive charge on the benzene ring don't worry about these names if you don't know them yet because i mean you might not know about benzene or anilines yet all right so in here uh, th this is a positive charge that we have let's see if we could draw another resonance structure for this uh, molecule what we could do is we could uh, we could try to de uh, delocalize the positive charge onto nitrogen by using this lone pair right so if you do that you're going to get a resonance structure like this nothing happens to any of these okay only thing that happens is that you are making a new double bond between nitrogen and the uh, carbon cation okay so now the carbon no longer has a positive charge that positive charge will migrate onto nitrogen onto nitrogen so in here you use the lone pair of nitrogen to make a double bond between nitrogen and carbon by doing that you migrate the positive charge onto nitrogen okay so these two resonance structures look similar but there is a huge difference between the two okay so when you take a look at these two resonance structures uh, let's say resonance structure a let's, let's call this as the resonance structure a the resonance structure a has a carbon okay it has a carbon that only has three uh, bonds and also it has a positive charge that means this carbon ha has not reached the noble gas configuration right so this carbon right here has not achieved the noble gas configuration but if you delocalize the positive charge okay using the lone pair then this carbon right here obtains the noble gas configuration okay so this this carbon obtains the noble gas configuration in this particular uh, resonance structure or in resonance structure b the carbon has obtained uh, the noble gas configuration so that carbon is more stable okay uh, so therefore we can we can clearly say that when it comes to resonance structure a and b b is actually more stable b is more stable which means uh, b the resonance structure b will be the major contributor to the final structure of the uh, cation okay this uh, resonance structure b will be the major contributor to the final uh, structure of the cation all right so when you have uh, two non-equivalent uh, resonance structures the actual structure usually resembles the most stable uh, resonance structure in this case it is b and of course a resonance hybrid is the most stable uh, out of all the resonance structures okay so the average resonance structure the resonance hybrid will be the most stable uh, out of all the resonance structures so with that i am going to conclude this video i will of course publish another video where we will try to learn how to draw resonance structures okay so uh, wait on that video but i will see you guys in that all right you have a good one take care